a while back I did a video on the Husqvarna 125B where, you know, it was just a nice day outside. We sat out there at the patio table and tore one of these things apart, put it back together, fixed it all up, got it running. And um, consistently, till this day, we still get lots of comments and questions as to what the gap is between the flywheel and the ignition module on these things. And a lot of people were upset that we didn't include that in the video. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head where I found that information at that day when I was putting it together. But um, the odd thing is I searched through all the Husqvarna information and I couldn't find a workshop manual again um, to find that specific spec. So I even called up tech support and they said, yeah, we don't really have anything for that. But I was determined to find that again because I knew I'd found it once. So I got to digging around and I found this information for you. So not only are you going to see that spec that everybody wanted that air gap setting for between your flywheel and your ignition module but most of the other specs for the hardware and a few other things to note here on the 125b when you're working on one of them so without further ado here you go here it is with a nice little drawing here module and flywheel gap 0 0.008 inches to 0 0.016 inches that is eight thousandths to sixteen thousandths for your gap between your flywheel and your ignition module on the 125B leaf blower and basically any of the other variations of this 125B leaf blower from Husqvarna. So now, as we said, we got you those specifications that everybody was asking for, that gap between your flywheel and your ignition module. Uh, and we've got some other specifications here. If you'll notice here, this is your torque for your screws that hold your uh, ignition module on. There's even note, a little note there telling you which screw to put in first. Here is the, uh, the flywheel. It tells you what to do there to install the, the flywheel correctly as far as the torque and everything. You even got part numbers on this. And this is just gonna keep going. Just about every screw and bolt you would use on this thing is on here. I think with maybe the exception of the muffler, we might've forgot that one, but... Um, all the other important notes are here in these pages. So this is something you can watch, you know, throw it up on your laptop and, uh, you know, just pause it at whatever section you're on there. If you want to see a torque specification or you need a little note like these here for reassembly and you'll be good to go. Now, again, this was something we had to really search for to find. But, um, you know, it was definitely worth it. As many people have been asking about that one spec, we figured there was probably people that needed these other ones too. And uh, without an actual real workshop manual out there, we could get our hands on, uh, you know, whether a paper copy or a downloadable copy. This was the next best thing. So we hope this helps you guys out. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and, you know, always keep checking back and always keep commenting too. Uh, without the comments, we don't know what you guys are after, what you guys need, what you guys are looking for, what you want to see, um, or what questions you need to be, you need to have answered. So, uh, right here is a perfect example. Enough people asked that question. Enough people, uh, commented about needing that, that one little missing piece of information from our original video. And, uh, now we're providing it to you and a lot more. So again, be sure to subscribe. We appreciate everybody who watches our channel. And uh, we definitely appreciate the comments, the emails, and the messages that we get from all of you. Now, take a look at this drawing here. This even tells you the proper orientation of the spark plug boot to line up your wire on your ignition module. You know, uh, it's crazy the stuff that was in this uh, this collection of drawings that we found, and all the little notes that were there that are very important when you go to work on one of these and put it back together. I mean, the, the more you know about this, the easier time you're gonna have putting it back together and making sure that it actually works properly. You know, here it even points out that there's the sensormatic tag um, that they put in there for um, security at, you know, dealerships and stores and all that. They even show that on here, crazy, huh? Um, yeah, here again, more more torque specifications for your fan, for your um, 
blower housing and all that stuff. Here's a detail on how to run your fuel lines. Very important because it's very easy to kink one of them and uh, have this engine starving for fuel or be very hard to start or just kind of bog down and not stay running after you get it fired up after you're done purging it. Here's a bunch of notes for uh, routing the wires for your kill switch and um, for your ignition module. That's very handy there. And this is another one for your throttle linkage and your, your trigger and your throttle assembly. Um, that's a pretty easy one if you just, you know, if you're the one taking it apart, it's a pretty easy one to remember how that goes and figure that one out. And cruise control tells you how to uh, assemble all that and your um, switch for your on off. And then here at the end, we got something really cool. This is the process to do a leak down test on the 125B and all the other variations of this leaf blower. Now this is the last slide here in this little slideshow of these notes and torque specs and all that stuff um, about the 125B from Husqvarna and all the variations of the 125B leaf blower that Husqvarna puts out. So we hope you enjoyed this and we hope you find it useful and um, be sure to subscribe as I said earlier and we thank you for watching.